shall receive power. March 1. A Holy Fragrance Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. In order to bear much fruit, we must make the most of our privileges and opportunities, becoming more and more spiritually minded. We must put away all commonness, all pride, all worldliness, and daily receive divine aid. If you grow spiritually, you must employ all the means which the gospel provides, and be prepared to gain in piety by the influence of the Holy Spirit. For the seed is developed from blade to full corn by unseen and supernatural agencies. The promise with which Jesus consoled his disciples just before his betrayal and crucifixion was that of the Holy Spirit, and in the doctrine of divine influence and agency. What riches were revealed to them? For this blessing would bring in its train all other blessings. The Holy Spirit breathes upon the soul who humbly rests in Christ as the author and finisher of his faith and from such a believer fruit will come forth unto life eternal. His influence will be fragrant, and the name of Jesus will be music in his ears and melody in his heart. The Christian will be a savor of life unto life to others, although he may not be able to explain the mysteries of his experience. But he will know that when clouds and darkness compassed him about, and he cried unto the Lord, the darkness was dispersed, and peace and joy were in the temple of the soul. He will know what it is to have the pardoning love of God revealed to the heart, to experience the peace that passeth all understanding, to have praise and thanksgiving and adoration welling up in the soul unto him who has loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He has peace through Jesus Christ and joy in the Holy Ghost. One with Christ, his soul is filled with submission to his will, and heaven is enshrined in his heart while he is enfolded in the bosom of infinite love. Christians of this order will bear much fruit to the glory of God. They will rightly interpret the character of God and manifest his attributes unto the world. Ye shall receive power. March 2. Repentance, the first fruit. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Repentance is one of the first fruits of saving grace. Our great teacher, in his lessons to erring, fallen man, presents the life-giving power of his grace, declaring that through this grace men and women may live the new life of holiness and purity. He who lives this life works out the principles of the kingdom of heaven. Taught of God, he leads others in straight paths. He will not lead the lame into paths of uncertainty. The working of the Holy Spirit in his life shows that he is a partaker of the divine nature. Every soul thus worked by the Spirit of Christ receives so abundant a supply of the rich grace that, beholding his good works, the unbelieving world acknowledges that he is controlled and sustained by divine power and is led to glorify God. There are those who, notwithstanding all the gracious invitation of Christ, continue to reveal ungodliness in their lives. To such ones, God says, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Repentance for sin is the first fruits of the working of the Holy Spirit in the life. 
It is the only process by which infinite purity reflects the image of Christ in his redeemed subjects. In Christ all fullness dwells. Science that is not in harmony with him is of no value. He teaches us to count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus our Lord. This knowledge is the highest science that any man can reach. Ye shall receive power. March 3. Love. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. John says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. No language can express this love. We can describe but a faint degree of love that passeth knowledge. It would require the language of the infinite to express the love that has made it possible for us to be called the sons of God. In becoming a Christian, a man does not step down. There is no shame in having connection with the living God. Jesus bore the humiliation and shame and reproach that justly belonged to the sinner. He was the majesty of heaven. He was the king of glory. He was equal with the Father. And yet he clothed his divinity with humanity, that humanity might touch humanity, that divinity might lay hold of divinity. Had he come as an angel, he could not have been a partaker with us of our sufferings, could not have been tempted in all points like as we are, he could not have sympathized with our sorrows. But he came in the garb of our humanity, that as our substitute and surety, he might overcome the prince of darkness in our behalf and make us victors through his merits. As we stand under the shadow of the cross of Calvary, the inspiration of his love fills our hearts. When I look upon him whom my sins have pierced, the inspiration from on high comes upon me, and this inspiration may come upon each one of you through the Holy Spirit. Unless you receive the Holy Spirit, you cannot have the love of God in the soul, but through a living connection with Christ, we are inspired with love and zeal and earnestness. We are not as a block of marble, which may reflect the light of the sun, but cannot be imbued with life. We are capable of responding to the bright beams of the sun of righteousness, for as Christ illuminates our souls, he gives light and life. We drink in the love of Christ as the branch draws nourishment from the vine. If we are grafted into Christ, if fiber by fiber we have been united with the living vine, we shall give evidence of this fact by bearing rich clusters of fruit. Ye shall receive power. March 4. Joy. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou Most High. We must have more faith. Let us begin to believe unto salvation. Let us come to God in faith, fully assured that as we surrender all to him, he will make us Christ-like in character. We must tell this to all over and over again. Then, one with Christ, we can reveal him to the world. Then all our fitful, haphazard work will cease. Let us honor God by showing firm faith and unswerving trust. Let us remember that he is not glorified by the manifestation of a fretful, unhappy spirit. The Lord cares for the flowers. He gives them beauty and fragrance. Will he not much more give us the fragrance of a cheerful disposition? Will he not restore in us the divine image? Then let us have faith in him. Let us now, just now, place ourselves where he can give us his Holy Spirit. Then we can give to the world a revelation of what true religion does for men and women. 
the joy of a Savior filling our hearts gives us that peace and confidence which enables us to say, I know that my Redeemer liveth. In his word, the Lord has made it plain that his people are a joyful people. True faith reaches up the hand and lays hold upon the one who is behind the promise. Great shall be the peace of thy children. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river. Behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. In God we may rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Men shall be blessed in him, all nations shall call him blessed. Let us strive to educate the believers to rejoice in the Lord. Spiritual joy is the result of active faith. God's people are to be full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Then he will be glorified in them. Ye shall receive power. March 5. Peace. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The world's Redeemer sought to bring to the hearts of the sorrowing disciples the strongest solace. But from a large field of subjects, he chose the theme of the Holy Spirit, which was to inspire and comfort their hearts. And yet, though Christ made much of this theme concerning the Holy Spirit, how little is it dwelt upon in the churches? The name and presence of the Holy Spirit are almost ignored, yet the divine influence is essential in the work of perfecting the Christian character. Some are not at peace, not at rest. They are in a state of constant fretfulness and permit impulse and passion to rule their hearts. They know not what it means to experience peace and rest in Christ. They are as a ship without anchor, driven with the wind and tossed. But those whose minds are controlled by the Holy Spirit walk in humility and meekness for they work in Christ's lines and will be kept in perfect peace, while those who are not controlled by the Holy Spirit are like the restless sea. The Lord has given us a divine directory by which we may know His will. Those who are self-centered, self-sufficient, do not feel their need of searching the Bible, and they are greatly disturbed if others do not have the same defective ideas and see with the same distorted vision that they do. But he who is guided by the Holy Spirit has cast his anchor within the veil wherein Jesus has entered for us. He searches the scriptures with eager earnestness, and seeks for light and knowledge to guide him amid the perplexities and perils which at every step compass his path. Those who are restless, complaining, murmuring, Read the Bible for the purpose of vindicating their own course of action, and they ignore or pervert the counsels of God. He who has peace has placed his will on the side of God's will and longs to follow the divine guidance. Ye shall receive power. March 6. Long Suffering. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, Bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. The captain of our salvation made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, in order that humanity might be allied to divinity. Man is to represent Christ. He is to be long-suffering toward his fellow men, to be patient, forgiving, and full of Christ-like love. He who is truly converted will manifest respect for his brethren. He will do as Christ has commanded. Jesus said, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Where the love of Christ abounds in the soul, 
there will be an expression of that love that will be understood by the world. Not all who name the name of Christ are one with Christ. Those who do not have the Spirit and the grace of Christ are none of His, no matter what may be their profession. By their fruits ye shall know them. The customs and practices that are after the order of the world do not carry out the principles of God's law, and therefore do not breathe of His Spirit nor express His character. Christ's likeness will be revealed only by those who are assimilated to the divine image. Only those who are being molded through the operation of the Holy Spirit are doers of the Word of God, and express the mind and the will of God. There is counterfeit Christianity in the world as well as genuine Christianity. The true spirit of a man is manifested by the way in which he deals with his fellow man. We may ask the question, does he represent the character of Christ in spirit and action, or simply manifest the natural, selfish traits of character that belong to the people of this world? Profession weighs nothing with God before it is everlastingly too late for wrongs to be righted, let each one ask himself, What am I? It depends upon ourselves as to whether we shall form such characters as will constitute us members of God's royal family above. Ye shall receive power. March 7. Gentleness. But the fruit of the Spirit is love joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. If we have Christ abiding with us, we shall be Christians at home as well as abroad. He who is a Christian will have kind words for his relatives and associates. He will be kind, courteous, loving, sympathetic, and will be educating himself for an abode with the family above. If he is a member of the royal family, he will represent the kingdom to which he is going. He will speak with gentleness to his children, for he will realize that they, too, are heirs of God, members of the heavenly court. Among the children of God, no spirit of harshness dwells, for the fruit of the Spirit is love joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. The spirit that is cherished in the home is the spirit that will be manifested in the church. Oh, we must educate the soul to be pitiful, gentle, tender, full of forgiveness and compassion.